We're back in my father's room because my room is currently curtainless. So the last thing I need is the neighbors being able to see what I'm doing in my room. So here we are with the curtains. They protect us. Hey guys, my name is Olive Fox. Welcome to my channel. And I finally watched The Wheel of Time. I actually watched the first episode the day before yesterday, but um, I was not able to record a review because I was, I was not feeling well and I'm still not feeling well. So whatever, let's begin the review. So the episode began with Moraine putting on her clothes in a very fine manner. I mean, it reminded me of Sherlock Holmes and others of the same fine species. She put on her clothes and had this like sort of tiny statue that she was carrying and, her, and the ring, the Aes Sedai ring and all of that. But the, the thing that really caught my attention was the fact that I was expecting the story to start when Moraine became an Aes Sedai. You know, when we watched the trailer, the very first scene was when she was, you know, handed the seal the the <laughs> the diploma whatever that you know she was now an Aes Sedai and everything I was expecting the story to start from there but the story began where she has been an Aes Sedai for some time and she has been looking for the dragon reborn and till now she has had no luck and we must find them before the dark does so while Moraine was putting on her clothes and giving this sort of narration and telling us about the Dragon Reborn and the Dark One and how she has to find the Dragon Reborn before the Dark does. Not the One. Not the Dark One. The Dark. We're already on first name terms. <laughs> Moving on, we were introduced to the Red Ajars who were chasing after two men, one of whom turned out to be a hallucination. That was awesome. That was just amazing and the, how, how they use the magic to like, you know, ca cause all this like um, landsliding and she, they caught the guy and it's just like at that point he was going mad already because he hallucinated the other guy. So obviously, you know, the whole point of it was there that they need to hunt down the men chainless, I think chainless. Um, because they are eventually going to go mad and they're going to cause a lot of destruction. So I understood that and I supported that idea because you know it's like putting down a rapid dog you have to put it down so that was amazing but the thing that really caught my attention was um firstly the dialogues how she talked about women how she was like this power the one power is meant for women not for such as yours this power it's meant for women but when you touch it you make it filthy while in real life, I do not support that because I'm all about equality. Men shouldn't be above women and women shouldn't be above men. It should be equal. And as someone who has not been able to do a lot of things in her life because she was not a boy, I, I feel for it, but I still want equality. I don't want superiority. I, I think when you've gone through something, you don't want it for another person as well. So I don't want men to be below women. I just want equality. But... Um, the whole thing about hunting down those chainlers made sense. He's mad. Um, and the Radija, she really seemed to enjoy herself when she was, you know, genteeling the guy. I think, I believe the word is genteel. You know, when she was killing him or, or whatever. And Moraine and Lan were watching from above and they were like, okay, that is not the dragon reborn and everything like that. But the red one, she really seemed to enjoy herself when the man was being tortured and how, how she talked about being like women and having the power and it just it did not seem right to me at the same time and later on into the episode Nynaeve you know told about her the woman who took care of her and how she went to the white tower and how they refused her because of the way she was dressed like the Aes Sedai they, they seem corrupted I thought they were supposed to be standing with justice and nothing matter I mean the amount of diversity I saw the amount of you know, men and women working together in the, you know, the Two Rivers village or whatever. I thought, you know, that I wouldn't be seeing that. The Aes Sedai, they don't seem the finest of people to me. I think it's not just the grey ones who are corrupted. I think all of the Aes Sedai are corrupted to, to an extent. So, uh, moving on, let's stick to the sequence. Um, Moraine and Lan were watching from above and Moraine seemed rather stoic. I mean... Lan seemed sort of like disappointed and amused and he, he had all the emotions and according to the Wheel of Time's description, Lan is not supposed to have 
um, emotions. He was literally described as the stoic warder. And yet it's Moraine who has literally no emotions throughout the episode. Not once did we see her, you know, smile or wince or anything like that. I mean, there were a couple of scenes where she, you know, she did show a bit of emotion, a bit of, you know, that she when she experienced pain and everything. That was there. But the amount of emotions Lan was showing, the amount of expressions the man had, it, was just, it just did not sit right with me. And also the guy, the chainler that they were chasing after, man, he did not look like he was 20. Isn't the Dragon Reborn supposed to be 20? He was born 20 years ago. So moving on in the two rivers, the village, Nynaeve was welcoming Egwene into the women's circle and the whole ceremony, how happy everyone was and how diverse it was. And it was just so beautiful. It's like heaven. It's, it's going to be like that in heaven. Yeah, they're going to be all sorts of people and they're just going to love each other because guess what? All negative, all negativity is going to be pulled out of you before you enter heaven. Anyway, um, it seemed like heaven. And when she was thrown into the water, oh my God. Like I was literally telling myself that Nynaeve said, um, trust the water. And I was like, just trust the water, trust the water, trust the water. And yet I could not. Because I once had to travel right beside a river that was more powerful than that for around nine hours. So we were on this like really rocky mountain and the road about was about this big and we were in a double cabin jeep. Like they're, they're dynamos. So on a tiny road in a big car about, I would say, 20, 30 feet above a river that was so strong that if we had dropped we would not have survived. The, the water was so strong, so full of life. And I just stared at it like, God, today, please, please just, just let me live. And we like um, managed to live, thankfully. And that was the day that I started trusting my father. I don't trust anyone. I have major trust issues. But when it comes to my father's driving, that was the day I decided that I trust him. If he's at the wheel, nothing can happen. And it's actually, and, and he has proved himself many times. Like he is, he's a good driver. He's not good at many things, but he is a good driver. A damn fast one, but a damn good one. And I am never going back there. The, the river, my God, it was so, so, so scary. I think I'll take a chopper. I can't afford a chopper, but I'll take one. So the Two River Village is away from, you know, sort of, they have isolated themselves from the world of wars and everything. They believe in living peacefully, literally want that in my life. Um, and they all just sing and drink and make merry. And they were all sitting in an inn um, celebrating, I don't know what, maybe some celebrations were coming up. They were coming up. I don't know. It was some pre-celebration thing going on. And... Someone told me that I would come to like Matt. The entire episode passed and I did not. Firstly, it turns out that the man bets, gambles and loses. And then he steals. Oh, however, he got the bracelet off of uh, um, Grace or Daisy. I think her name was Daisy. Daisy. Yeah, he did that. And then you might, you know, want to tell me that he, you know, he cares for his sisters. He's supposed to. I care for my brother. That doesn't make me a good person. It's like literally my responsibility and I'm not going to start liking Matt for the bare minimum. So for now, we do not like him. And I literally wrote in my notes, I have a little script here. It says, imagine he turns out to be the dragon reborn, the horror. Now he's leaving. Now he's leaving the two girls with his parents. I mean, I would have really um, enjoyed if there had been like a tiny scene where he had entrusted them to someone else. Would have rather enjoyed that, but he didn't. So now the girls are in the worst hands possible. Lan entered the inn and my God, he looked creepy, creepy, like the dark one. I mean, the resemblance is uncanny. How does nobody suspect Lan of being the dark one? I do. And it would be really cool if he does turn out to be the dark one. Or the dark, as Nynaeve says. <laughs> so he enters and introduces Moraine and they are given runes and everything. Um, and that's when we were introduced to Layla, who was a very fine lady. But what didn't really make sense to me was that they kept her entire character rather shady. 
I mean, at first she was not there celebrating. Was she mad? Did, does, is she like jealous of Agreen or something like that? She was not celebrating and she is fine built. She is exactly what a blacksmith should look like. I give you points for that. She was, you know, working and it turns out that, you know, she does love um, her husband. Her husband's name is, I wrote it down here, Perrin. Her husband's name is Perrin. She does seem to love him. But her entire personality did not really make sense to me. Not that we need to know her because the poor girl died. And the way she died, it was heartbreaking. I mean, I literally suspected her to die as soon as the attack started. I was like, okay, I don't see Layla surviving. And she didn't. But her death, it crushed my heart. It was... Can you imagine killing your husband or your wife or whoever accidentally? I don't think there is anything worse than that. I mean, killing someone on purpose, killing your wife on purpose is good. I mean, the bitch said I wanted it. But to kill them accidentally. I don't even want that to happen to my enemies. It's so bad. You kill them. You don't even hurt them. You kill them accidentally. And you know you weren't even drunk. You know that it wasn't really your fault. It just happened. God, it, it's just like, I don't think I will ever be able to recover from that. But I do give you points for it. Because if she had been like killed by a minotaur or something, that would have been like everyday stuff. But this, I don't think I've ever seen this happen. Maybe, but I don't recall. I must have, but I don't recall. But this is fine. Agree to disagree. While some wars are completely useless, others are needed. For example, the one at hand. If the Dark One doesn't start a war, he's going to die. If the Aes Sedai with the Dragon Reborn don't start a war, they're going to die. Sometimes wars are needed. Yes, can the Dark One exist in his own place in peace and the Aes Sedai in their own place? Possible. But highly unlikely because he's the Dark One. He literally needs to feed himself and his army. And sometimes when your own resources are gone, or if the only thing you can feed on is bodies and hearts and brains, you have to go and get them. So to every vampire who drinks dear blood, for the love of God, you are disgusting. Go find a human, please. So Moraine and Lan settle down in their rooms with fresh linen and stables for their horses, with the thing that again... Caught my attention was the fact that Lan had way too many emotions. Even I don't care that much about the temperature of water. Because I have taken many cold showers in my life. Sometimes the water heater is just not working. So I just stand there and I'm like, LNF, we are warriors. We are not afraid of cold water. I literally tell myself that I'm a warrior. And then I just jump into the cold water. Yes, it requires a pep talk, but I do it. So, Lan, you need to start doing that as well. <laughs> Moving on with the characters, Nynaeve is a wisdom. And it turns out wisdom isn't just like, Nynaeve is very wise. No, Nynaeve isn't full of wisdom. Nynaeve is our wisdom. Wisdom is like a thing you can become. And that just, it, it kind of like, um, I like that. Because Nynaeve does seem like a really strong and um, wise person. So that's when the Dark One entered the village and again, he resembles Lan to great extenses and that also got me thinking that if Lan had entered the inn in his colour changing cloak, you know, the one that um, in makes him invisible and sometimes it's just his head floating around, that would have been quite a sight. <laughs> the next day, Lan and Moraine set out to find the Dragon Reborn, whereas Agween and this guy they have a conversation and my god again the scenes were so beautiful they were so stunning and so peaceful and just so beautiful so while they were having that conversation moraine has a little chit chat with Nynaeve and it is rather apparent that she does not like the Aes Sedai it makes a lot of sense for what they did to her mother figure it makes sense and Lan found the much loved sight if you guys have watched my previous videos, you know exactly what I'm talking about. The dead sheep! God, did that look stunning.
So as they celebrated the light festival because they all believe in the light and the light is what gives them power and everything, they were celebrating and the dance was rather Turkish and it was absolutely beautiful and all of it just made me think it would be so amazing if Nynaeve turns out to be the Dragon Reborn. I think we will all be saved. She's wise enough. She's literally our wisdom, so I really hope it's her, but I, I think I still think that it's this guy who's going to turn out to be the Dragon Reborn. I don't know his name. Please leave his name in the comments. Midway into the festival, the Trollocs attacked and I really like how they have like dressed the face in the Trollocs because I've, um, I read somewhere that they aren't all CGI, like some makeup and everything was used as well. And I think that was great because they were, they looked like a perfect combination of humans and beasts. It wasn't like too much and it wasn't like not enough. It was just the right amount. They were just so good. They were tall you know, taller than humans and just huge, but they still had the human body parts. So I really um, liked the Trollocs and then everyone was just like running around trying to find shelter and Perrin and Leila run into a house, probably their own, and they let the lady enter. I think that was the sweetest thing that happened in the entire episode because people would literally not even hold the elevator for you. And they they let her enter during a trollic attack. And I think that was just so, so, so sweet. People don't usually do that. My family didn't do that for me once because they, they did not know that I was at the door. <laughs> Also, why does this merchant seem to be rather enjoying himself? I mean, it's almost as if he's a part of this. He's rather sus. God, what is that? Moving on, even the people who were out of town, this guy and his father, they too got attacked by the Trollocs. And I absolutely hate when a father does not tell his son or his children or anyone he knows about something as mandatory as fades and trollocs and stuff i mean there is a good chance that your son might turn out to be the dragon reborn and you decide not to tell him why not i mean literally he asked father what is that and i was like his father told him nothing i mean i be i belong to a family like that so this was like a pain that i felt it hit my heart like a hammer because my family doesn't tell you me things like this either they, they don't tell you anything i don't understand i mean what are you gonna do with all these secrets just tell me about the fades father but they, they they never do they never do they wouldn't even tell you about your cousin they wouldn't even tell you parents don't tell you a lot of things and one day they like randomly throw something at you like oh, do you know i had a brother I have been your daughter for 18 years and you decide to tell me that now. Are you kidding me? <clears throat> After they defeated the Minotaur, I'm just going to call the Trollocs Minotaurs because I like the Minotaur. Anyway, um, after he was defeated and the father was like, go, run. He can run with you, sir. So I'm really glad that he decided to run with his father. I mean, it's... It's a good thing. Just the other day, I saw this on Instagram. I do understand that you wanted to save him, but... Girl, the, why don't... Why do people not just push you out of the way? Why do people take bullets for others? How about just, you know... Push them out of the way. It just does not make any sense. Clearly you had enough time to run and stand in front of me. How about pushing me out of the way and yourself as well? It just doesn't make sense. So he took his father back to the village and I was really glad that the father survived and Moraine helped him survive. Thank you so much, Moraine. And my God, when Moraine was fighting the Trollocs, Lan's action sequences were absolutely beautiful. All those stunts have my heart and the the magic and how she just like was 
working with it and in the beginning she did sort of like seemed confused like she had no idea what she was doing the facial expressions but then she got a hold of it and she was like light help me and then she just did it all and like every super movie ever she destroyed the entire village but she saved it and Moraine also sort of looked like Cinderella. She was wearing blue and all the magic around her. If this would have been a Barbie movie, by the end of it, her dress would have changed and her hair would have been all sparkly and Lan would have turned into a prince. <laughs> so after Moraine so generously helps this guy heal his father and I was finally thinking, oh, there is finally a movie where they don't blame the good guys for the bad things happening, they're like, oh, you showed up and this happened. That's really sus. Um, this guy, he sort of, you know, went about it. He, he, he said the same exact dialogue, but he had like, he asked this as a question. He was like, okay, you showed up and then this happened. What's going on? And that's when they found out that many Trollocs were, you know, um, heading their way. And I believe and they were, you know, since they were after just the Dragon Reborn, so they decided to take just the four of them away. So Maureen told them that if you leave with us, the Trollocs will have no reason to attack the village because you wouldn't be there. And I think the Trollocs know. Oh, actually, I don't think. But does the Dark One feel the Dragon Reborn's presence? Is he like familiar with it but i think if he was familiar with it he would have like simply attacked the first village where the dragon reborn was i don't think he is familiar with that but if he isn't then he plans on killing everyone hoping that in the way he would somewhere kill the dragon reborn as well so it doesn't really make sense how the four of them's departing the village will protect the village in any way it, it's it's confusing and finally, the six of them rode off into the sunset without Nynaeve, which was um, a little, con yeah, I was a little concerned about that because imagine Nynaeve was just unconscious in some part of the village and she wakes up after they have left. That would be real funny. <laughs> so that was it for this video. Really hope you guys enjoyed. And if you did, give me a like. Also comment below and let me know your thoughts. Anything you want me to know. Just let me know. <laughs> let me know this guy's name, please. Um, and also subscribe, click the notification bell so you'll be notified every time I upload. And also check out my edits channel as well as my Instagram. The links to everything will be in the description box. And that is it. I'm the only other fox in this world. And do I like Lance's personality as it is? Very much. Absolutely love it. It's just the fact that the Wheel of Time described him as the Stoic Warder. So that's that. And bye! Baby, Jesus.